Hello friends, I'm Ashish Tabari, founder and CEO of Axomize, and to our new listeners, welcome. To our old ones, welcome back. It's been a while since we talked about formal verification. So I think in the last podcast, we had a very interesting chat uh, with Michael Lichthardt. And today I want to actually talk about a very interesting topic, which is architectural verification and deadlocks. So who would have thought that architectural verification can reveal deadlocks, right? Who would have thought that? Well, it all depends on what we are verifying and how. As for how, um, I'm very clear at the outset, we are using formal verification. And for what, we are actually talking about focusing on architectural verification, at least to begin with. So as I described in a recent uh, blog article on Tech Design Forum, um, called Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About RISC-V Architectural Formal Verification, that one of the ways in which formal methods uh, offers value for architectural verification is in the way it explores corner cases, revealing blind spots in architecture, definition, architecture implementation, microarchitecture implementation, and verification. And although certainly formal methods is not a panacea, but it is a very fast track way of finding bugs and signing off with assurance in presence of exhaustive proofs that the design implementation works as expected, where as expected in the context of architectural verification is assessing whether or not the requirements mandated by an architecture are satisfied by the implementation. For those of you who are not aware of what we are talking about, there is a completely automated app called Formalizer that we've made at Axomize that can exhaustively verify the architectural correctness of processors using architectural checks written by us on top of the commercial formal verification tool stack. So for example, in a matter of six hours, we can prove the entire set of functional correctness properties that are required to make sure that a given RISC-V processor complies with the RISC-V ISA exhaustively. We can even find bugs much more quickly. Not only that, we can also show you evidence of why proofs make sense through our new coverage model. So I, I invite you to actually come and take a look. It's a super cool idea of actually understanding why proofs make sense in formal verification. So if you're coming from simulation, you would be able to get enough feedback to understand why these things are what they are. But today I want to talk about deadlocks, yeah, the other part. So Let's define what a deadlock is in case you're not familiar. So deadlocks, um, also known as lockup, happens when a design can be stuck in a state forever. The only way you can bring the design out of this stuck state is through an interrupt or through a reset, um, you know, control or delete, do you remember? The question is, why does the design get stuck? Well, multiple reasons can cause this scenario. So Every piece of hardware machine uses finite state machines called FSMs to manage data flow and control. And they have registers that hold states and again, they manage the whole data flow. So typically what happens is the designs transition into a state and then they transition out. Both of these transitions are the in transition and the out transitions are under certain design based events, as in the design is generating some conditions under which, under which these transitions happen, or external events, such as an interrupt or a debug. So what we are aiming to check here is that for all incoming transitions into a state, we can take an outgoing transition. If we can establish that for all states in our design, that means our design will not be locked up at all. So typically simulation-based verification can analyze a finite number of incoming transitions, but not all of them exhaustively. We know this already. In simulation, one typically needs to run the simulation uh, for a very long time. In this case, they would have to run this for eternity to actually be able to encounter a true deadlock. And that is because you need the entire space of all possible input stimulus to drive the design 
to actually then assure to yourself that actually there isn't a deadlock that you've left behind. And this is really not practical to implement and nobody tries to do this with simulation. With formal verification, on the other hand, we get stimulus for free. And so long as you do not block legal stimulus, you can see a deadlock manifest with formal verification pretty swiftly. Well, depends on what tools you're using, etc. Informal, we write assertions whose um, failure can flag the lockup. So, but it's not that all assertions firings can indicate a lockup. So we write these special assertions called liveness properties, and when they fail, they can indicate a true lockup. However, if you've been um, following some of the new development this year, Mentor Graphics has been talking about a new radical approach to deadlock detection that can identify spurious failures and therefore distinguish between a spurious assertion firing and the one that shows a true lockup. Recently, we were taking a look at one of the processors in Axomize that look a lot like, uh, if you're familiar with the ARM, offering a, a a bit like the ARM Cortex M4. And we encountered multiple scenarios where our architectural checks from our app failed due to potential lockup. In one case, the scenario was such that the memory was unable to return the data back to the core for a pending load store transaction, and that would block the execution of an external debug event. In another case, we see that one of the main FSMs in the designer stuck forever in a particular state, and you cannot actually get the FSM to come out of this state even with external interrupts being active. What is most subtle about this type of lockup is that it only ever happens when a processor executes a special instructions, such as branches and jumps. Now, we have the luxury of uh, working with the top formal verification tool providers. So in this case, we use uh, the wonderful cadences Jasper Gold. And within seconds, I was able to find that there is a problem. Now, analyzing these uh, takes a little bit more time because you want to rule out if, if the assertion failed for the wrong reason. And, you know, if, if there were fairness constraints missing on the input. Now, what are they? Well, think of fairness constraints uh, in the same way as you think of liveness properties. They are just the dual of that. They are applied on the primary inputs to make sure that the inputs toggle infinitely often and in the right way as mandated by the uh, interface constraints. In this case, it turns out that the environment is sending legal traffic in the design and yet the processor can get stuck in a state if it got into the state in a certain way. The beauty of this bug is that it will show up only if you got into the state via branch instruction or a jump instruction. If you got into the state via any other means, the failures disappear. And we've been able to check this as well. Now you may say, well, the software will never cause the sequence of events for the processor to lock up. Really? I mean, could, are you really going to be ensuring that nobody ever writes a loop uh, instruction in the program um, that can accidentally run forever? I mean, how do we know that a hacker cannot exploit this vulnerability to cause a lockup? On further analysis, it is clear that the design has not been coded to be sensitive to these scenarios and that it can lock up under these conditions. Only a hard reset can get you out of this lockup. Now, you may recall that last year we reported finding several deadlocks in Zero Risky and Ibex, and they all had a lockup, a specific type of lockup, which would get manifested when a debug event was activated. And in the case of IBEX, it was a lockup in one of the uh, FSMs, many FSMs that they have in one of the FSMs, if the debug arrived at a time when this FSM was decoding an instruction. If the debug arrived at any other time when this FSM was in any other state, this lockup would not manifest. And as it is the case with formal, it is usually in the order of seconds to find these, and the traces are five to seven cycles, eight cycles deep. We can't just build designs assuming that they will always be driven by good software. What if your processor is out there in the space, has a problem that memory and processor cannot communicate for some reason, and what if you initiated a debug from your space station, and the debug is blocked 
due to the problem with the memory not communicating with the processor in the first place. Okay, perhaps you can issue a reset and this isn't a problem. I personally believe we need a reset in our verification approach. Simply running trillions of simulation cycles and banking your luck on functional coverage will not reveal your blind spots. Talk to us and we can show you how you can deploy Formal to verify big designs in no time with high confidence backed up by proofs and coverage. I invite you to come out unstuck from your current verification flows and think out of the box. Thank you friends for your time today and we will be back shortly. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and or email us at info at to carry on the conversation about the different joys of formal. And stay safe. Thank you very much.